Hey there, Internet. This is Dave from Geekorama.net. I've got a special treat for you today. I've had a chance to sit down with award-winning and best-selling author Robert J. Sawyer. Take a look. Hi, my name is Robert J. Sawyer. I'm a science fiction writer from Toronto, Canada, and I'm here in the Alberta capital city of Edmonton to promote my 23rd novel, Quantum Night, just out from Penguin Canada and Ace Science Fiction in the United States. All right, thanks for joining me today, Robert. Let's start with some hard-hitting political questions. Who would make the better president, Donald Trump or Elmo? See, this is a tricky question, or it's a trick question, because anybody at all, you could have said, who would make a better president, Donald Trump or this table? And the answer would be the same. Anybody at all. Anybody except Donald Trump. Donald Trump is the worst political figure to emerge in my living memory. And I lived through Richard Milhouse Nixon. I lived through some abominable people in the White House and also here in Canada at uh, 24 Sussex Drive. Uh, this guy is showing every sign of the playbook that Adolf Hitler used demonizing out groups, uh, saying most horrific populist but horrific things to build up a following of non-thinking individuals. Uh, and it really would be a disaster. Elmo for sure. Um, Elmo may have a hand up his ass, but Donald Trump is going to put his hand up all of ours if he gets elected. Excellent. So amongst other things, you have a fairly well-known fondness for the Planet of the Apes. What is your personal favorite and least favorite Planet of the Apes anything? The best thing about Planet of the Apes to a guy like me, a committed lifelong pacifist, is that the heroes in Planet of the Apes were pacifists. Dr. Cornelius and Dr. Zira were committed to peace. And in a science fiction universe where we have things like Star Wars, Battle Star Galactica, and very few Star Treks where there are people who are actually committed to nonviolence. It was wonderful to see these bright, intelligent individuals, setting aside that they didn't happen to be Homo sapiens, uh, espousing a philosophy of peace and really living. Uh, and in some cases dying because uh, for their beliefs. Uh, for me, that was absolutely the best thing about Planet of the Apes. Those characters, those intellectuals who eschewed violence resonated enormously with me. The worst thing, the second film, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, cut corners. When you're going to do a film like Planet of the Apes that depends on the sophisticated makeup appliances, John Chambers being the Academy Award winning uh, makeup designer who created the look. Uh, in the second film, they cut corners. An awful lot of the background players and even some of the foreground players are wearing rubber masks. They're not wearing the sophisticated appliances, and it stands out like a sore thumb. It looks like a B-grade motion picture. Uh, you know, if you're going to do something that's all about the special effects or the makeup appliances, you have to do it right. And it was a huge mistake. Uh, so typical of a studio of that time to say, well, the first one made a lot of money, let's do a really cheapy second one. These days, of course, sequels, the, the next sequel in a franchise will have a budget larger than the pre previous one if it's a success. That wasn't the way back then, and it shows in Beneath the Planet of the Apes. All right, so your 23rd novel, Quantum Night, just hit stores a few days ago. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Quantum Night is a science fiction techno thriller about an experimental psychologist at the University of Manitoba who discovers a flawless technique for identifying the untold numbers of psychopaths, self-obsessed individuals with no empathy for others that are lurking everywhere in society. More than that, he discovers that twice the number of psychopaths there are philosophical zombies, people for whom the lights are on but nobody is home entities with no interior life whatsoever who are easily made into followers for these psychopaths. And it deals with this experimental psychologist hooking up with a quantum physicist to try and figure out what can be done about this. All right, so once your current book tour is done, what is next for Robert J. Sawyer? Well, Quantum Night was my 23rd novel. I've been at this for a quarter of a century. I've won all the major awards in the science fiction fantasy field. I don't feel any particular need to write another novel after this. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but I've been having a great time doing some film and television script writing. 19, and sorry, 2009, ABC made a TV adaptation of my novel Flash Forward. I was one of the script writers for that show. I had a blast. And I find it's a different set of creative muscles. So there may be more film and TV rather than more books in the future for me, Robert Chase Sawyer. 
excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I'm really enjoying the book so far. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll see more and hear more of you later. My pleasure, David. Thank you. Have a great day. What I always say, the beginning of any writing class, I get I taught at the Banff Center probably for six years, for instance. <coughs> um, your job is not to be blandly acceptable to the general reading public. Your job is to be the favorite author of a narrow segment of the reading public. You try to please everybody, you end up with everybody going, yeah, he is okay. But no. Robert was an absolute joy to interview. Uh, getting to watch his book release and him speak was fascinating. He's done so much research to go into this book. Um, I've just started the book myself. It is wonderful. You can pick up Quantum Night in hardcover, audio, or ebook, depending on what you like, uh, wherever major books are sold. Thanks for watching.